for those of you who um, I don't know, my name is Sarah Selig, and I hope to get to know all of you better this weekend, and I'm just really grateful that you all are here this weekend with us. Um, for some of you, um, you know why I've gotten involved with ocular melanoma, and for those of you who don't, I always like to start this meeting by a reminder. Um, because the first year that we planned this meeting, this was not my role, this was Greg's role. And it's always hard to be at the podium without Greg. Um, and I just wanted to bring in a little bit of Greg's energy and wisdom into the room this morning before I give you a little overview of QOM, because I know he would look out at this room and be so energized by seeing all of you. He felt so isolated as a patient. And at the first meeting, when he stood up at the podium and saw everyone in the room together, felt the energy, saw the community, it gave him so much hope because it's us, it's us in this room, this group, all of us together, as Kylie mentioned, who can make a difference in this disease. We all have a role to play, and I hope as you see the overview I'm gonna give of Cure OM, that you see that thread through our initiative. And Greg felt that, and he believed it. I feel that way, I think we as an organization feel that way, and I really hope all of you in this room feel that way. We have a diverse, group of people here today with providers of different types as well, and it's really gonna take us coming together um, to have the impact that we wanna have, and I know we can have it. So I just wanted to bring Greg in with us since he can't be here physically with us. And just also a reminder, which I always like to remind that um, Greg's legacy uh, lives beyond ocular melanoma, um, which was very important to him. And this is our daughter, Juliana, who has also gotten into the family business, although she doesn't quite understand it yet. But she, <laughs> she knows that we're helping people um, so that they don't experience, this, experience the same challenges that mommy and daddy experienced. And that's really our goal in this. So I just thought I would give a brief overview of the Cure OM initiative. Um, just to give you a sense about what we do and who we are. Um, but there are several of us in the room today, Kylie, myself, um, Anya, who's here at the front table, Lauren, who will be running around. And please stop any of us at any point, ask questions, give feedback. It can be now or after the meeting. We'll give you the overview, but as Kylie said, you're the engine that makes us run. So we need your input and feedback. So QROM was founded in 2011, as Kylie mentioned, um, and I'm gonna go over um, some of the points on the slide in a little more detail. And then a lot of these points are actually threaded throughout the agenda today. You're gonna hear a lot more from different speakers. So our mission is to support research and accelerate the development of effective treatments and ultimately a cure for ocular melanoma through innovative strategies, including international and interdisciplinary collaborations to improve the lives of people affected by ocular melanoma by creating systems and programs to provide education and support and to advocate for the ocular melanoma community. So we need a lot of guidance to do this. We have a patient and family steering committee who are listed here. And I've put an asterisk by our three amazing committee members who are here in the room today, Sam Versky, Anne-Marie Montijo, and Kim Roy, uh, who you'll hear from shortly. And we're just so grateful to this group of people providing um, feedback for us along the way. We also have a phenomenal international scientific steering committee. And we have um, a couple different steering committees that have flown out of our larger steering committee. For example, a registry steering committee. Or we have meeting planning committees. So we try and get people involved in different ways that stem from these kind of um, larger umbrella uh, community steering committees. Just to give you a quick overview of our patient and caregiver initiatives, I would say that this meeting is really the backbone um, of our patient initiatives, the Eyes on a Cure Patient and Caregiver Symposium. And these are um, the different places and dates where we've had meetings previously. And you'll see the bullet at the end. We've narrowed down to a few cities and we'll be seeking your input um, to confirm next year's meeting. We try and move the meeting around the country um, to be more accessible to a wider range of patients and also because we feel that it's a real opportunity to bring the medical community together in a particular city um, with outside folks who come in to support the meeting as well and to really help support the medical community in addition to the patient community. So that's a goal of ours to move the meeting around. 
here are a few pictures from past meetings. Um, and if you guys don't mind, you'll see some um, photographers around getting updated pictures as well at this meeting. And then a few other components of our uh, patient and caregiver initiatives. And if you have any questions wanting to learn more, please let us know. We have um, educational webinars online. You can um, look at past ones, and we're, we're creating new ones as well. We have educational materials. I'll show you some pictures of those. Um, educational and awareness campaigns. We have meet and greets around the country. If you want to start one, you can contact us. We'll support you in that. We have a buddy program, a clinical trials finder. And one thing I really want to point out, and you have a flyer in your folders, we run virtual support groups um, with our colleagues at Thomas Jefferson University, from whom you'll hear more later. Um, and that's open to patients and caregivers. And they're virtual, so you can um, participate anywhere in the world. And we have had people participate from around the world. Um, so please see one of us now or after the meeting if you're interested in participating. And then we have a lot of grassroots organizing, fundraising, awareness building. Um, and galas as well. So just a couple of pictures of some of our resources. Here are CuroM brochures. We have them outside as well. Please take as many as you want, and we can ship them to you um, or your providers at no cost. Some pictures of some um, awareness and advocacy campaigns that we've had. As some of you are aware, we've run an I Get Dilated campaign the past couple of years, the month of November. And these are some of the images that we've used on social media. And then a picture of our team celebrating a um, humanitarian award, uh, Dr. Takami Sato in Philadelphia at a gala where we raised quite a bit of money for the Cura Research Initiative. And then all of you <laughs> have participated and supported um, the program beyond that as well and organized your own grassroots events to raise awareness um, and funding for our programs, for which we're so grateful. This is a list from last year of all the Miles for Melanoma events um, and the dots on the map as where you all have started CureOM teams. Um, and the energy and passion that you all show in doing that is phenomenal. And our board chair always makes a comment about, well, that energy from the CureOM teams. And I mean, I think he just, he wishes he could harness it. So you've inspired us. Uh, briefly, I'll just go over our research initiatives. And this is where you will definitely hear more about most of these pieces throughout our um, agenda today. We've secured over a million and a half dollars for research. Some of that has been given out in peer-reviewed research grants. And in your folders, you have a list of past recipients of research grants. Here, I've just listed a few of them. We've, they're given at different levels. And the two that we've given most out for CureOM include the Established Investigator Award and the Career Development Award. And we'll hear today from Dr. Yu, um, who received an award uh, two years ago, and we'll be here to present on um, his research, which we're really excited. We try and have CureOM um, sponsored researchers present at the patient meeting because in most cases you all have helped us fund the research and we want to have you hear back as quickly as you can the research that, that we're funding together. We hold CureOM scientific meetings. To date we've held about 12. Um, we're working on a patient registry. You'll hear more about the patient registry um, later today. Um, we have been an advocate to get ocular melanoma into the Cancer Genome Atlas Project, which is an initiative of the National Cancer Institute. We have Dr. Scott Woodman here later today who will be telling you a little more about that. And then we've built partnerships with the National Cancer Institute and the Society for Melanoma Research Congress as well. Here are just um, some photos from some of the scientific meetings I thought um, I would share with you. And this is from last year, um, our first in-person meeting um, where we were discussing the development of the patient registry. Again, you'll hear more about that later. This was a journal article that came out of the meeting um, a couple years ago, a review article that came out of the meeting we convened with the National Cancer Institute. Um, this is a picture of uh, Dr. Acklin. Um, at Thomas Jefferson University. He was funded actually by a grassroots fundraising campaign, part of the Unite campaign that I mentioned, and it was grassroots funding that funded this research grant. We went and visited his lab. Um, so it's, it's amazing to be so close with the researchers we're supporting that we can hear back in real time uh, how the research is going and what the impact is. 
this is the article that came out of, the first article that came out of the Cancer Genome Atlas Initiative. Um, again, you'll hear more from Dr. Scott Woodman on that later today. And this is a blog that the National Cancer Institute asked us to co-write um, with Dr. Kenna Shaw, who was the head of TCGA at the time, about our experience co-creating space for the uveal melanoma community in that initiative. So that's a quick overview. Um, stop me at any point if you want to hear more about that. Um, but I think you're going to hear more throughout the day. And um, I think you're going to hear more about where do we go from here throughout the day as well. Here's a quick list of what we're thinking. But a lot of what we're thinking is how, how do we take what we're currently doing and do it better and, and reach more people and elevate the awareness of ocular melanoma and increase the funding for research and integrate researchers to leverage those resources. So we're thinking a lot about how can we do what we're doing now better, elevate it, and leverage resources um, is how I would summarize um, where we'd like to go. And um, again, you know, we, we run on, on you and your input and your feedback um, and your support in, in funding all of these initiatives. And so thank you so much for all you do to help Cure OM do what we do and for being here this weekend. <laughs>